Um, thanks for the opportunity of coming to speak to you this afternoon. Um, yes, I'm going to be doing a bit of an update on, on the project. For us now in Swansea, very much in terms of delivery. Um, I'm not suggesting that the development is over, but our focus, certainly at the sharp end, is in terms of, of the delivery. Roger Evans was going to pick up on some of the supply chain stuff this afternoon, but Roger isn't available, so I'm, I'm going to pick up some slides on that as well. And David was telling me last night that um, there's lots of new faces here this year. So in my introduction, I'll just give a brief overview of, of our company's ambitions, then move into the delivery for Swansea, and then some of the supply chain stuff. And if I overrun, I notice there's a guy at the back that puts up a little card that tells me. So I'll keep an eye out for him. Um, yeah, so where were we? I guess we're probably four, four years into meeting our, uh, our ambitions and our vision, but our ambition is, is to build a series of tidal lagoons around, around the coast, and, 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 and why shouldn't we really? We've got this huge, huge tidal range and we need to take advantage of it. Um, our vision is to deliver, within the next 12 years or so, six lagoons. Excitingly for us in Wales, then, then four of those probably, potentially, are going to be in Wales. So the press picked up, or we announced in the press, that we are looking at Swansea, Cardiff, Newport, Bridgewater, Colwyn Bay, and, and Cumbria. Um, and collectively, that's about six to eight to ten percent of UK's energy demand. Um, excitingly, again, and rather uniquely, um, we are anticipating and designing the lagoons to operate for a minimum of 120 years. But we believe there are about 16 opportunities within the UK where some people can, can build lagoons, and about 50 opportunities internationally. We are currently looking at where well, we have, in fact, recruited or recruiting in France and have lots of interest from India, China, South Korea, um, and other places. But uh, to enable us to meet our determination of spending 50%, and I wish Carl Sargent was here now, 50% uh, of the capital expenditure of, of Swansea Tidal Lagoon in Wales, and 65% in the UK, then we need to develop a supply chain, and a strong supply chain, and a supply chain that can help us deliver this new hydro industry within Wales, focused in Wales, centred in Wales, but across the UK. And as I said, I'll pick up on some of that stuff as we go on. But look at the figures. If Swansea is a billion pounds, and if it's a four-year build, then we need to spend half a billion pounds in Wales over the next four years. If our delivery program is 12 years, six lagoons, and it's about 30 billion pounds, then we need to spend 15 billion pounds in Wales over the next 12 years, minimum. Six lagoons, about 4,500 offshore wind time turbines, about 10 nuclear reactors. In truth, as as our engineers are optimizing the designs, then we just keep getting more power from, from future lagoons. But to remind ourselves about Swansea, then it's, it's a 9.4 kilometer wall, sitting within that wall, 16 turbines, um, equivalent of, producing equivalent of 150,000, 155,000 homes, which is about 90% of, of the bay and about 11% of, of Wales' use. And, and it's obviously far more than a power station. Um, we'll be hosting international water sports, triathlons. Uh, people will be able to walk on it, run on it, hopscotch on it. Um, we'll be having oyster hatcheries, um, lobster hatcheries, and, and much, much more. It'll be operating for about 14 hours of the day, um, every day. So it's very, very predictable, which the funders are delighted with. In terms of timelines and where are we, um, then we can see the finishing line, although we're not complacent. So in terms of the DCO, uh, Secretary of State has until June the 10th to give us a decision. Hopefully that's going to be positive, and hopefully that's going to be before, before June the 10th. 
Um, in terms of, of contracting the work, then we've identified six packages within, within the construction. Two of those packages have already been awarded. Um, the other four packages will be awarded by the 13th of April. Then the journey for us thereafter is anticipating that we have done what we need to do with DEC, anticip anticipating a positive decision with um, the Secretary of State, taking us to about, I say June maximum, 10th of June maximum, then tie up the cash financial clause two months, and then our plan is to be on site September of this year, and then powering up to the grid end of 18, start of 19, but that's obviously just for Swansea. Many would have picked up, I'm sure, that we've already progressing with certainly Cativ, where we've recently put our um, scoping report into pins, but now we've got dedicated teams on those other four lagoons. So that there is the, is the construction program, difficult probably to see with this light, but let's look at some of the phases. No, I can't see this either. Um, but here we've got the western burn wall, eastern burn wall, opposite 16 turbines sitting on the seabed. So what we'll be doing first of all is coming off on the eastern side, on the western side, sorry, um, building the, the temporary coffer dam. So that's really season one, enabling us to get to the seabed to start the construction on, on the turbine housing and start fitting in the, um, the turbines which we will be, touch wood, um, assembling here in Wales. And it may be, um, well, in fact, <coughs> we're currently looking at five locations. Competition is out currently. We know by the 1st of April, I think it is, where we're go going to locate this vast turbine assembly plant. Um, the second season then will be coming out on the, on, on the eastern side, 